Hey my people, it's Jax and welcome to The Real Life. The Real Life is a video series from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander digital media platform The Real, produced by the team at 33 Creative. We're all about sharing First Peoples yarns and experiences and celebrating the diversity and uniqueness of our cultures, the oldest surviving cultures on earth. In each episode, I'll be lifting the lid on the real lives of our guests, finding out what makes them tick, and exploring what it means to be an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person today. It's gonna to be fun, it's gonna be informative, and it's gonna make you feel all them good vibes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all of our episodes. Yawo. Warm it, here we go. Warm it, pump it. Can you know it? This is fun. Nice, no, honest. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to The Real Life. I'm Jax and today we have the man himself, Paddy Mills, here, my baller. Trey Bolts. How you doing? How are you? Good. Welcome home. I'm excited. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited to have you here. I'm really excited to have you at home. Um, I feel like you're away a lot and I know you miss us. I hope you miss us. <laughs> well, we really miss you. Is it good to be back? It is. It's good to be back. It's always good to come back. Be home, um, obviously living on the other side of the world now for 12 going on 13 years. Um, it's Ooh. good to be able to come back and uh, refresh, recharge, see everyone um, before going back over again. Yeah. And so your time here has been spent busy, but really like I feel like wisely you've visited some of the most amazing communities that we would all be blessed to even visit. Um, what's that been like and um, how did, what led you to want to go out to those communities recently? Yeah, um, look, it's, it's obviously a big part of who we are to be able to um, promote cultural awareness first and foremost um, and then to be able to give back. And I think it all starts with um, what I've been fortunate enough to do and live on the other side of the world um, and being over there for so long now um, and kind of understanding what the not only stereotypes that are out there about who Australian people are um, but how little knowledge there, there is about Australian culture so the best part about me living overseas is having the opportunity to educate people on Australia's culture and Australian history um, and to really promote identity of who I am as an Indigenous Australian. So that's where it starts first and foremost, um, you know, and the prime example is, is meeting someone in America for the first time. Um, they automatically think that I'm African American because of my appearance um, and then they hear me speak and they hear an accent. Um, and then it starts a conversation mm -hmm. of me telling them that I'm Australian. Um, and then that's when the stereotypes appear of um, obviously not being a blonde hair, blue eyes, surfer type of person. Um, so I guess the, the, not necessarily challenge, but the opportunity there is to be able to peel back the layers to be able to um, educate people on who, who I really am. Um, so it's been a blessing in that sense, yeah. um, being able to do that. Um, so coming back home, always to be able to, you know, come back to family first um, and then go to community and, and stand in front of, you know, the, the next generation, the young yeah. kids, um, give them hope, inspire them um, in any way possible. Um, I think is, is important because at the end of the day, what it does for me is fuels, fuels the fire for me to be able to go back and, um, and use that as motivation. Yeah, and so you must have met some pretty amazing young people. Um, and did, they, did their stories, did you have any stories or particular people or young boys and girls you met that really, that you could see yourself in or that really you walked away going, that young person has just maybe not maybe changed your life, maybe not that big, but maybe they've just gone, wow, I, this is why I do what I do. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's probably the best part of being able to 
visit communities and I know already before going into it that there is going to be someone, um, if not many. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about finding that genuine connection with them because um, no matter what community it is, you're still a visitor, although, you know, we are, I am an Indigenous Australian, for example, going to um, Kanamala, Queensland or Unadada in South Australia, I'm, I'm also a guest um, and a visitor, but that doesn't give me any right to treat them any differently. Yeah, I've got to come in and, and, and respect the people, the community, the elders there, um, and have a genuine connection with them first. Um, and I think that in itself allows me to be able to have meaningful conversations with, you know, boys and girls and, and elders. So, yeah, we always come out of there um, feeling like we have made a positive impact. Um, and I have countless amount of memories um, of, of little boys and girls. Um, and it's, it, like, like I said, it, it really, um, hits me to the core about what I do is making an uh, impact yeah. um, in places that I might not even know um, exist or people in exist. So, uh, like I said, um, motivates me to go over and back to America and keep working hard and then a good reminder of, um, of what I'm doing. Yeah, totally. And I feel like what people don't get to realise is Australia is so blessed with the best country. Like you would have seen obviously Kanamala, you went to Walgett as well and Udnadatta. The difference in the landscape there, was it just so beautiful to witness and then to also take a team with you, your wife went with you, your team, to let them experience, you know, only just three places yeah. of the, you know, the beautiful places we have here at home. Yeah. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be to travel to a lot of places um, and see how um, indigenous people are connected with their land and, and the landscapes. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's the same throughout the world, yeah. Um, but to be able to come back um, and, and to see that first-hand connection that the people have with the land on top of how beautiful it already is, no matter if it's um, mountains and ocean or desert and red sand and dirt, you know, there's um, meaningful um, connections and traditions with the land which makes the culture so unique. Um, but, but again, it, it's, it's all those things that have been around for thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years um, that make you do what you do today, you know, that much yeah. better. 100%. And you touched on, you know, their connection to land and water. And so one of your projects or one of the initiatives that you've helped um, launch this year while you've been on um, break from the MBA is, is your water project. And I'm super keen, but also very proud of the work that you've done in this area, but would love to know, like, how did that start? Yeah. And, and, what, and what made you go ahead and go, you know what, I'm doing it this year. Because you've had a really busy year. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's an interesting one that came up. Um, basically, I think it's first important to note that you know, and and I always say this, but I never want to be defined as a basketball player. Um, now, as I play basketball, but even when the day comes when I hang up the boots, I still don't want to be defined as one. You know, and and I think being able to be fortunate enough to play basketball at an elite level, being able to use that platform the right way. So, um, you know, been in San Antonio for a number of years now and, and kind of putting into perspective of what I do and playing a basketball game, mm. um, putting that into perspective of the real issues that are, <laughs> are happening in the world, you know, and, yeah. and one of those is um, access to clean, st sustainable drinking water within remote indigenous communities throughout the whole country. Um, so then an opportunity came up to be able to tackle this, um, this issue and be able to link it to 
the work that I do in playing basketball. Um, so the opportunity come up to be able to have an event um, throughout um, this time of the year to hold the 2019 International Indigenous Basketball and Cultural Showcase. And first it was an example of how to celebrate culture through sport, in this case basketball, um, and acknowledge and honour um, Indigenous cultures on an international level to celebrate um, all of it, you know, all cultures throughout the world. Um, so in this case, we were able to um, host a basketball game between Australian Indigenous basketball and the Kingdom of Hawaii. Um, but as I said, it, it's more than just basketball and the community aspect to this game that we held um, was to be in community. Um, and this is where the water project came into it. Um, so the community aspect of, of this event was to um, deliver uh, hydro source panels to six remote indigenous communities throughout Australia. So the communities that we chose was Dampier in Western Australia, Udnadatta, South Australia, Black Tank, Northern Territory, Wilcannia and Walgett, New South Wales, and Kunnamulla in Queensland. Wow. So we saw this as a first step to be able to create awareness to this issue, um, to hopefully bring other people on board to be able to get this to as many um, indigenous communities as we, as we can throughout the country. So um, an awesome project, um, really thrilled that you know we were able to deliver deliver it mm -hmm. um, and you can just tell by the um, responses and feedback that we've been getting from community members and elders how much of a um, positive impact it had emotionally first more than anything um, and for us to go and visit um, three of those communities as well was um, was really special but um, that's how it, it came about so um, you know at the end of the day just making the most of being a role model for Indigenous Australians throughout the whole country um, and letting them know that, you know, your identity is the most important thing and don't be ashamed of it and, and um, be proud of it. Um, and this is my way of being able to give back to all that I've, I've learned growing up. Yeah, I think that's um, one thing that makes us and us be very proud of who you are and how you conduct yourself um, here and internationally. I think what you said about, you know, you're not a basketballer, you, you know, you're you, your identity, and that fills a lot of um, young people in the next generation with hope. And these communities will now have hope that there are answers and solutions and um, we just rally together and we, you know, partner with people and we work collaboratively. So you partner with Australian Indigenous Basketball, mm -hmm. who is a fantastic organisation um, and is really a hub for our mob. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about how you partnered with them and how you've been partnering with them since yeah. you've been home? Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, Australian Indigenous Basketball is a non-profit organisation mm -hmm. um, who acts as the national um, entity for Indigenous basketball in, in the country. Um, and basically what they try to do is to create pathways and opportunities for Indigenous kids um, to be able to get them to the next level or um, to be a, a, an Australian boomer or an Australian opal, um, which is something that I think has been lacking in our sport of basketball. Um, so it, it's good, you know, they, they take on that, um, that role. Um, they've been doing an excellent job. They've been around for probably about four or five years now and doing a great job of being able to go overseas um, and play against other Indigenous um, mm -hmm. teams. Um, but whenever they do play games, they always have a community aspect to what they do, whether it's doing clinics in communities, going to schools, um, and being able to um, share cultural experiences as, as well. So obviously a natural fit, um, being basketball and being cultural, for me to help out in any way I can because it always will come back to kids and, and the next generation and providing 
pathways and opportunities for him to best succeed. Yeah. Um, and you see it in, in rugby league, you see it in AFL. Um, I'm in America, in San Antonio, just watching with awe how um, both of those leagues are able to celebrate, rugby union even at that national level with the, with the Wallabies. Um, so it's been a long awaited time of basketball being able to come to the party to first acknowledge it, um, celebrate it, and then do whatever they can to be able to create these pathways for, for our, our kids. Um, and AIB is, is definitely doing that and will continue to, to build and grow stronger. But the event that they were able to, that they were able to um, pull off over the last week um, has been awesome, has been great. Um, you can see it just by um, you know, kids' faces mm -hmm. and feedback from parents and, and whoever around the whole country has been awesome. So I, I think this has definitely got some legs to it um, and something that I'll keep on being able to be involved in and, and help in any way I can. And what have some of the players said to you? You know, some of these players probably haven't had the chance to perform on some of the, um, in some of the stadiums that, you, that they've been, you know, playing in. Has anyone, something anyone has said that you've just gone, wow, you know, this has really affected them? I think it's more, it might be the other way around actually, because obviously playing for Australia at an Olympic Games, a World yeah. Cup is, is one thing. and. You know, I'm specifically a role model for Indigenous Australians, but, you know, I, I also carry the flag and being able to represent the right way for, for all of Australia. Um, and, and the green and gold is, is great, and there's nothing better than being able to put that on and, and represent your country. Putting an Indigenous basketball jersey on just narrows it down to that exact point. And I think having that feeling of putting that jersey on is something I haven't had yet that those boys and girls have had um, that I think would be really, really cool to be a part of. So hopefully I will one day. Um, I'm, um, I get FOMO every time they get the opportunity to be able to put that jersey on, but um, I think you know, it, it, again, it's just a, another type of pride and passion that, that you, you, you know, that comes out of you. And again, you see it in these other sports that are able mm. to, to represent their significant country that, that they're from. Um, so, you know, so it's just knows? to do it through basketball. Yeah. Maybe in Tokyo. Yeah. You'll be donning, donning a Indigenous design Could show. be. Yes. I'll just put that out there for everyone. Whoever wants to design it, we'll just start that little comp. <laughs> that would be deadly. That would be, yeah. Because that's coming up soon. I mean, this is like not your first Olympics. And I think that's a really huge achievement. Like I feel like everything you achieve and you make yourself so busy in your off season, like I've said, but now looking to 2020 and your fourth Olympics, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's a huge achievement. Did you ever think like you'd, I mean, obviously you'd be like, I really want to achieve as much as I can, but four yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. Um, nor did I think really one. Mm. I mean, you obviously dream it. Um, and then after that, it's kind of a, a day by day sort of mentality of like, all right, accomplish this small goal, accomplish the next one and keep kind of building from there. So um, it seems a bit surreal, three under my belt already. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the chance of, of going to a fourth. Um, but but it, it is exciting. And, and like I said, the finding ways to be able to stay Passion. You're always going to stay passionate, but going back and and hitting that recharge button by going to community and finding all those reasons um, that you started playing in the yeah. first place, yeah. um, I think, is important because you know it, it is a, it is a business and there is a lot of money involved. Um, so you need to be able to find time for yourself to be able to. Um, to recharge and, and, and go back to the core values of what makes you tick, 
Um, but you know, there's there's still a lot of things that I want to accomplish while yeah. while I can. Um, and the World Cup this year in in China that's coming up in a couple of weeks, um, and Tokyo Olympics is is definitely on the radar. Yeah. So how are you feeling about China and the team and going over there? I mean, it, there's lots of hype and whatever, but um, I feel like that's what you do and you let the boys experience what you do in our communities and I feel like that fills their tank up too to take over to that, to, you know, international tournaments. Is yeah. that something you try and put onto the boys and say, look, this is who you're actually doing it for? Yeah. Uh, for the most part, everyone already has that within yeah. them and, and the yeah. reasons why they love representing Australia so much. Um, the passion is there, the pride is there. Um, and it's good to be able to tap into that as much as we can because it is another level um, that, you know, you arise to the occasion. Um, so it, it, it's good. And, and to be able to do it together is good. But there's five of us, um, the leadership group with um, Joe Ingalls, Andrew Bogut, Aaron Baines and, and Matthew Delvadova, um, a good core group of guys that... Me and Joey obviously grew up playing against each other first and then with each other. Um, but that camaraderie that we have had for so long um, always comes back to um, being able to get us over the line in, in whatever circumstance or adversity we might go through. But we're in a good opportunity now to be able to go over to, to China for the World Championships and try to create history and, and win a medal for the first time ever in, uh, in men's basketball for Australia. So a great opportunity, obviously a, a hard road, a, a road ahead, but um, one that we, we really believe in ourselves that we can accomplish. Yeah, I think so too. But um, I'm... That's nice. Thanks, you're right. I'm a basketball <laughs> coach now. <laughs> um, but uh, what I was going to ask you about is when you go over there, so even now with the a USA team that was here, you have a Spurs player in the other team. Do you have any other like mates that you're looking forward to seeing? You know, in the other teams, maybe in the Spanish team, French team. Are you looking forward to um, seeing catching up with some people? I know you're focused, but there's some yeah. people that you're looking forward to I think catching up with. Besides the the Australian team, mm -hmm. um, and being in San Antonio for so long and becoming a, a leader and a veteran of, of that team. Um, the USA team obviously has um, Derek White, who you know has been our starting point guard for our team um, last season, um, and he's on the cusp of trying to make the team for for China for the USA team. So it's good to see him um, here preparing and, and trying to make the team. Um, pumped to see him. Um, yeah, there, there's other teammates that I've played with and, and against. Um, throughout my career in the NBA um, that will be playing over there. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, everyone, everyone gets into um, country mode and, and yeah. being able to represent their country, so it is different again. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to uh, just the challenge of being able to create history, you know. There's that yeah. meaning behind what we're trying to accomplish and everyone's on the same page and, and really wanting to get this done. So. We got a good crack at it coming up uh, here in a couple of weeks. But uh, you talk about D White, Derek White. Yeah. He's in your coffee gang. Yes. Is he? Is he? he How is. do I get in that? Look, look. I've got my own cup, BYO cup, sustainability. Here. Yeah. It just grows and grows, and I know there's people in there that don't know about coffee. Yeah. Derek White would be one of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does he order? Something. He like? orders hot chocolate. Oh. So it's a little bit of a makeshift coffee gang, especially in <laughs> San Antonio. But um, at the end of the day, the coffee gang is built for us to be able to come together, uh -huh. um, not planned in a natural way to be able to hang out, get to know each other away from, you know, the locker room or the basketball yeah. court. Um, and coffee seems to be that place that we can kind of do that with, where we can talk about anything but basketball. Yeah. Um, and Derek White is probably actually the perfect example of the coffee gang because although he doesn't drink coffee, 
he still will come along yeah. just to hang and Bless. and order a hot chocolate and mm. just be a part of it, you know. And, and that's really what the coffee gang is, um, more so than actually drinking it. So, um, yeah, just, just part of camaraderie and trying to build that... Um, that relationship within the team um you know it's it's big picture it's team it's spurs culture um and we've got a long long road to build for that too i heard um speaking of spurs culture i heard pop was said in the interview about the world cup that he's just going to feed you feed you kai kai so you eat yeah. and then you'll be slow for the for the yeah. usa team yeah he <laughs> He actually, he's been doing that for like <laughs> nine years right now. It's what, like we go eating? out to feeding us. We'll go out oh. to eat and it's like, here, eat all this food and drink all this wine. And then he yells at us while we can't spring up the court. I'm like, <laughs> While your skin folds are too yeah, much. <laughs> like, stop feeding us all this pasta then and then we might be able to do it. He's got a tactic. Do it. Oh, yeah. Bobby. So then now that I'm on the other team, it actually works, works for him. He's probably my favourite person in the whole of the NBA yeah. franchise. Besides you and him, I feel like he's like the Wayne Bennett of the NBA mm -hmm. for but for the NRL. What do you like about him? I just think he's just straight to the point and he just like I love watching his interviews. He doesn't give anyone anything and yeah. that's great. Yeah. Sticks to his focus, sticks to it, walks away. Does he seem like a um, madman from the no. from afar? No, not at all. Because he definitely isn't Isn't he? Yeah, he's quite the opposite. Does he tell jokes and then does he laugh at his own jokes? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I hope so. I can tell that from here, from Australia, from 15,000 kilometres away. Yeah. No, I really, um, I really love Pop and it's really cool to have him in Australia now with you. Like, yeah. Have you caught up with him a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, as much as I could. He, he's obviously, the schedule has been quite busy for both teams, um, but managed to catch him a, a couple of times. Um, but it's been fun. Last night we obviously played and um, hearing him yell from the sidelines was actually um, pretty cool for once because I knew he wouldn't, wasn't yelling at me. <laughs> so I actually enjoyed it for once. But uh, it's only a few weeks before I'm back and yeah. he'll be yelling at me again. <laughs> well, um, I really appreciate you talking with me and I know that you know we grew up together and but I feel like... Uh, your story is one that needs to be told over and over. And I feel like um, you just sitting here with me today over a cuppa is really, really important. And um, what you do in our communities is so important. And like you said, it's bigger than basketball. It's about who we are and that's why we do the real and telling the real life stories. But do you want to play a game? Let's do it. It's called It's The Real. Oh, gammon, and if we had promo shot, there'd be like music and then cut to like, we don't have any of that. So here we go. Got the paddle. So. We this, sitting on that the whole time. Yeah, it's really warm. <laughs> Can't say that. Um, so this is, it's the real or gammon. So is it true or false really for those of you that are playing at home? So I'm going to give you this, hold the handle. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. And you need to tell me if it's the real or if it's gammon. Okay, first question, ready. If you weren't playing for playing basketball, you'd currently be in the run-on side for the Brisbane Broncos. Oh, 100%. Really? Probably as water boy at this stage, <laughs> but I mean, that's still run-on side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part of the team. Like Alfie in the yeah, back. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oh, we have the fluoro bib. <laughs> the blue one? Why don't, yeah, I love Alfie. Um, okay, next question. GVO stands for <clears throat> Great Vest, Old Mate. <laughs> No. What does it stand for? That would be for? GVOM, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Damn. GVO stands for Good Vibes Only. Yeah. And why, why, why GVO? Um, it's probably, uh, I don't know, it just caught on in San Antonio of being able to keep that positive vibes within the yeah. group if things aren't working out the way that we want to and... Um, just, just something to say and refer back to of like, all right, no, we've got to stay positive here and, and, and take the high road. So, uh, GVOs. Love it. I'm going to get shirts, man. GVO. Nice. Um, okay. A little bit different for It's The Real or Gammon. I'm going to call out celebrities and you need to tell me if it's The Real or Gammon that people have thought that you were them. 
So oh, okay. if I say the name, you've yeah. got to say it's the real. If someone said, oh yeah, you look like that person. Gotcha, gotcha. Are you ready? Yeah. First one. Jason Derulo. <laughs> the real. <laughs> okay, next one. 100%. The weekend. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Luke Curry Luke Richardson. <laughs> Whoa. If I've been mistaken, it's Luke Curry Richardson. <laughs> No, right? it's the other way around, right? Yes, yeah, so, so gammon, gammon, but <laughs> he wishes. other way around. <laughs> we have a podcast with Luca coming out too, by the way, which is amazing. Elsie Rich. Elsie Rich. Um, okay, one, two more, I think. Okay. When you're bald, Tony Parker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Did I would people? say the real because I would get yelled at all the time on film by Pop and it was Tony the whole time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, <laughs> Just take it in and move on to the next one, but that would happen all the time. Okay, cool. And last one, Nate Jawai. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it in there. Gammon. 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 He wishes too. Him and Luke, they wish. <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate you and coming and spending time with me and no us worries. and the real. And it's been fun. It's been really cool. It's been real. It's been the real. All right, guys, thank you. Um, thanks for catching up with us. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up with everything we're doing in the real life and the real. It's been pretty deadly. So this is Jack signing off. Yawar.